Now coming to the hepatic blood flow. The normal hepatic blood flow is about 1 to 1.25 liters per minute, which forms about 25 percent of the cardiac output. And the main source of hepatic blood flow is hepatic artery and the portal vein. Liver is having dual supply, one from portal vein, another is from the hepatic artery. And through hepatic vein, finally it drains into the inferior vena cava. Here you can see the portal vein which is formed by the superior mesenteric and the splenic vein and the hepatic artery arises from the celiac artery of abdominal iota and both this artery and vein goes into the liver and finally drains from the hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. The first and foremost preoperative testing which is very important in patient with IHD is echocardiogram. All we do is whenever patient comes with the echocardiogram, you look at the systolic function or the diastolic function. It is like a danger waiting to happen. You are focusing on one point without realizing the danger. Here when you look at the echo report, when ejection fraction is more than 50 percent, you are happy but we do not look at the regional wall motion. As we move from apex to base, we have about 70 segment. As a non-cardiac anesthesiologist, you need not know about all the 17 segment, but certain transthoracic echocardiogram view you should be really aware of. This parasternal long axis and the apical short axis will give a fair view of overall function of the heart. The Coming to the classification, it is divided into five major group. The group one is actually what is meant by pulmonary artery hypertension. Here your pulmonary artery will be involved with various diseases. The most common is going to be idiopathic. Drugs, congenital heart disease, connective tissue disorder can cause pulmonary artery hypertension. This is classically what is meant by pulmonary artery hypertension. A subgroup of it, which is called group 1 hash, includes pulmonary vena occlusive disease and pulmonary capillary hemangiomatosis. Coming to group 2, which might be the commonest cause for pulmonary artery hypertension, that is pulmonary artery hypertension arising from the left heart disease. Here, the pressure from the left side of the heart is transmitted to the pulmonary vein. From the pulmonary vein, it goes to the capillaries. Then it is reflected on the pulmonary arterial pressure. Now, coming to the various parameters of TEG and uh, Rotem. In TEG, it is a reaction time, whereas in Rotem, it is a clotting time kinetics time in tech, whereas clot formation time in rotum and you have the alpha angle which is same for both tech and rotum and maximum amplitude in tech, whereas maximal clot firmness in rotum and you have clot lysis 30 and 60 here, lysis index 30 and 60 in rotum. What are these various indices? Let us look one by one. Now coming to the reaction time or the clotting time in the TEG and Rotem. It is nothing but the time until the initiation of fibrin formation. Here the fibrin formation can take place and it is usually taken as a period of. So what are the various mechanism by which your hemodynamics is halted. The first and foremost is cardiac compression and arterial ventricular dimension caused by the octopus and the starfish suction apparatus. Right ventricular compression which is very important during obtuse marginal grafting, mechanical stabilization and target area immobilization which can alter your left ventricular systolic and diastolic function, your cardiac manipulation and impact diastolic function all can cause hemodynamic instability. Let us look at each causes for hemodynamic instability. Coming to cardiac compression, it leads to 
hypotension which might aggravate the already ischemic myocardium and this ischemia can lead to ischemic mitral